like, yeah, we're going to learn about kinesiology today. Kinesiology. So the real question for all day that we've been waiting for is what is kinesiology? Kinesiology is how scientists study human movement and how they understand their bodies when healing or even to use information like movement to animate some of our favorite movies. Imagine that you broke your foot. You're not going to walk the same way, right? It, it hurts. Why would you walk on your hurt foot? But when your body is moving, your, the way you walk is slowly changing over time. So kinesiologists look at this movement change over time to see how they can help you recover the best way possible. So then you can go back to moving the same way you were moving before your foot broke. Now, it's all about understanding the muscles, the bones, and how they work together. Understanding how our muscles and bones help us jump, run, play. Kinesiologists are the body experts that help us learn how to exercise and keep our bodies as healthy as possible through the use of our tracking our movements. So today we're going to look more into that as we go through. So first question is going to be, how do our muscles work? All right. So I think first, let's zoom in on the cellular level, because last week we, we learned about cellular biology. And a few weeks ago, we learned about uh, neurobiology, neuroscience. So let's put those together and zoom into the cellular level and look at how muscles work on a cellular level. Adifa, do you have a question or comment? Um, so I think muscles work by, like your brain tells you what to do. Like if maybe if you're, if you're gonna go grab a pencil, your brain tells your hand to move and go get the pencil. Yeah, that's really good. Zooming out, big picture. Yeah, that is totally how it works. Yeah, you're right. Your brain is going to send signals to your body, and then it's going to make these movements. Oh, I see there's another guest too, right? From Farah and Elf. I think there's like a certain movement that you have to do. Yeah, a certain movement that has to happen inside your body to make the muscles move. That is excellent. So now, on the next slide, I'm going to show you what that movement is on a cellular level. So it all comes down to these two proteins called actin and myosin. They're small proteins, and they're inside every single one of your muscles, and they're how your muscles work. So a signal comes from your brain, and it's totally right, and it goes through your neurons. Remember, neurons are all throughout your whole body, and sends these signals to the actin, actin and myosin to trigger them. How they're triggered is myosin binds to ATP, a special energy currency. It's a little tricky, but does anyone remember from cellular biology where ATP comes from? Arlen, do you have a guess where ATP comes from? The liver. The liver, good guess. I'm guessing these organs. But it actually comes from a part of every single one of your cells, or almost every single one of your cells can make its own ATP. It's that important. Your cells can't do anything without ATP. It is the form of energy. Oh, Adifa, one last guess. Is it our DNA? Oh, very close. Your DNA has is like a blueprint. So it has the instructions for how to make ATP. It has the instructions how to make actin and myosin and all your proteins, but it doesn't actually directly make it. It's made by your mitochondria. It takes the food we eat and the nutrients we consume. Our bodies can actually use those nutrients and convert those into ATP. And that's the usable energy for our body. So what happens with actin and myosin when your muscles, um, is the myosin uh, binds to the ATP and you see these weird little kind of a uh, little, um, they kind of look like leaves, <laughs> like a little, a little plant, maybe like little beans. And so those little beans are like little hands and they grab onto the rope, that's the actin, and they pull it. So it's just like your hands pulling in a game of tug of war, but there's millions of these hands grabbing and grabbing. So it never, it never slips. So when the muscle wants to contract, it pulls this rope, this actin rope with these little hands, these little orange hands you see. And then when it relaxes, it releases and releases this rope. All right, guys, we're going to move on to the next part of this lesson with what is motion capture? Ms. Elena, you gave a great explanation, a great question on what is the strongest muscle in our body. But what is motion capture? Motion capture is like these little devices on you that like captures you in this like in your like device and then shows you like how your body is and how you like move. That's a great answer. Yeah. So right here we can see these little dots on the uniform. 
those little white dots are being used for motion capture. They're these sensors. So imagine you having these motion capture sensors all over your body. It would be tracking each of your movements. Kinesiologists have to learn about how our bodies, muscles, and skeletons move in order to place these sensors in the right place, and then how to accurately translate what the sensor is picking up into a computer program. These small spheres not only help them in animating shows, movies, and video games by seeing where this movement is, it also helps them track a patient's movement to see how they're recovering from injury or even how to analyze an athlete so they can be more efficient. Yes, I'm so excited to start today. So we're going to do part two of kinesiology today with very special guests. We have not only one, but two kinesiologists today. Yeah, we get so lucky this week. We have two kinesiologists to join us. Andrea Rivera and, Ms. Mar and Marisa Lu. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Marissa. We are very happy to be here. Yes, we're super excited to be here. I think I forgot to add something, you know, of one of the things that I really, really like. I love cookies and I love gingerbread cookies. So I'm very excited to be here with Marissa. Oh. So hi, everyone. We are excited to be here. Today, we will be talking about motion capture. Uh, so we have an agenda for today. So first, Sorry. we'll go over what motion capture is. Then we'll talk about life science. We'll, we will explain what life science is. Then we will talk about visual effects. And we will, we will conclude with a fun group activity Charles and Andrea have planned for us. So uh, without further ado, let me just introduce myself pretty quickly. My name is Andrea. You can call me Andrea. I love movement, any kind. I love running. I love dancing, anything. And I got into biomechanics because of dance. But wait, what is biomechanics? Biomechanics is the science of movement. But it comes from a larger field called kinesiology, which is the study of movement. So what kind of movement? It can be any kind of movement. I was personally interested in analyzing dance, specifically ballet. And I was interested in seeing how ballet would help people with neurological disorders. So people that have special powers that probably you and I don't have. And I'm here with one of my besties co-workers, Marissa Lou. So she'll introduce herself. Hi guys, I'm Marissa. Uh, I also started off in sort of the life science biomechanics world, uh, especially looking at sports biomechanics. So looking at athletes and how we can prevent injury for them and how we can help them be stronger and better athletes. When I started at Vicon though, I uh, started working with all of our customers who are in the visual effects field. So I work with a lot of our customers who are doing movies and TV and video games. And so we'll get get a chance to show you guys what that looks like today. Okay, so what is motion capture? Motion capture is also known as mocap. Uh, as you can see, it comes from the two words, two letters uh, of motion, so mo, and the three letters from capture. So that's why we call it mocap. So it is a process of recording movement of objects or people um, like myself or animals. As you saw in the first slide, probably we had a cat there. So yeah, we also work with animals. So what do we need to do motion capture? We need three things. The first one is cameras and we need special cameras. We call them optical cameras. The next one, next thing that we need are markers. So you can see right now, I have a ton of markers. These, these ones are passive markers, yeah? So what happens is that the cameras emit a special light, infrared light, that bounces to those little tiny balls, the little the little thingies, you call them little thingies, I love that, yeah, the little, little tiny balls, the passive markers, and that special light bounces back, and so we know where the markers are in space. So we need three things. We need the cameras, the optical cameras, the passive markers, and we need a subject. So it could be a person or an animal or an object. Oops, okay. And next, those little tiny balls can actually become superheroes. You can really become anything you want. So as you can see here, we have the subject on the left-hand side and you can become a superhero. You can become Spider-Man, 
you know, why not Spider Woman, you know, and Hulk and whatever you want, really. So just a little history of motion capture and how it all started. So back in 1872, Lillian Stanford, who with his wife founded Stanford University, hired another guy, Edward Maybridge, to investigate how, how a horse trots or gallops. So now did you know that motion capture originated with in the life science for gait analysis? We'll talk about gait analysis a little bit more today. But gait analysis is analyzing how you walk. And so it originated in life science and then in trans it transitioned or it's, it, 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 it uh, continue with the BFX, which is what, what Marissa does now. So she'll share a little video so you can see what we can do. So in this video here, you're gonna see that we have a man in a mocap suit and he's got those little silver markers all over him. And he also has markers on a prop, in this case, it's it's like a foam uh, baseball bat or foam sword. And that's being animated to turn him into a Jedi with a lightsaber. So it's pretty amazing that you can have someone who's in, in a basement room, um, but he has his cameras and he has his markers and he's got himself all markered up and he can animate himself into, some, into a, a whole other character and a whole other planet. Okay, so next up we have uh, a real-time motion capture demo for you guys. So you guys will have noticed that Andrea is uh, in a mocap suit here. So she's got, we already have the markers all over her. And we're going to go ahead and switch over into our software. So we have this, this large awesome LED wall behind her. Um, and so right now we kind of build up the layers of what our software is seeing. So right now um, we can see all of our um, markers that the system recognizes is her body. So you'll kind of notice at first you can kind of tell that it's a human, but it's kind of hard to tell too. So then we can build that skeleton inside of her marker cloud. And we can see that really nice skeleton that we build from there. So on top of that, um, we can kind of throw on different, um, we have this default uh, sort of ninja looking character. Um, but then once we have that base skeleton, we can attach it to a new skeleton. And so this one's gonna look a little bit funny at first, but then you'll see the an this the sort of character that this is attached to is a gingerbread woman. So you can see here how Andrea is is animated um, in real time. Any movement that she does is being matched up on the screen there. Let me actually make a quick switch to here. So you can see what I'm seeing in my software here and how I can control uh, what it is we're seeing. Um, and then you can see Andrea um, in, in the lab in the corner there. So any movement that Andrea does, we can get this gingerbread woman to do as well. So if you guys have any requests of, of movements that she can do, she can try to do that for you guys. So we'll take, we'll take requests here. Yes, Juan. Can she do a backflip? Ah, the other group asked that too. I don't know if Andrea can do a backflip, but she was able to do um, a cartwheel earlier. So we can do a cartwheel. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 